In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this guest of phrase game in PowerPoint, similar to what you might have seen in a game show called Wheel of Fortune. I will then show you how to easily make this available online so your audience can access this game anywhere. Before I dive into the content, I want to say thank you to iSpring for sponsoring this video. More about them later. I recommend that you create a template of this game in PowerPoint. This will make it easier to create multiple games with different phrases. To do this, open a blank presentation in PowerPoint. I'm going to start by adding a shape. And the shape I want is a square. The way to get a good square or a perfect square is to hold down on your shift key and then just draw it in. So this uh, ensures that you get a perfect square every time. That size is okay for me. Let's move it down here somewhere. I'm going to put in my letter, so letter A, and let's make this bigger. The next thing you would do is change the style of the shape to the way you want it. So I'm going to change the blue, let's make it a bit lighter. Is that too light? Yeah, let's go for this one and then shape effects. And I'm going to go for preset and I'm going to go for this one here. It's got a bit of a shadow on it. I'm going to remove the shadow. There we go. So there's my first, my first square. And I'm going to duplicate this one by pressing Control D and then just drag this up here. So this is the first, this will be the first of my buttons. And let's make this smaller by holding down the shift key. And again, that just ensures we get a perfect square. Let's re resize that. So to create the next button, different ways you can do this, but uh, I'm gonna click on it and then hold control shift on my keyboard and then just drag to the right. And this ensures that the shape is duplicated and it ensures that it's in a straight line. So I can go to the side, I can go down, but I can't go off, off that line. That's quite good. I'm going to let go there and I just change this to B and we would repeat this for each of the remaining letters. So there's the letters of the alphabet. I think they're all there. And the next thing I want to do is I want to sort out those spacing. So as you can see, I went off, I went a bit off with the spacing in between those letters. There's a quick and easy way to fix this. So if I select these letters and then under shape, we go to a line and there's this option here called distribute horizontally. And this ensures that the spacing in between each of these letters is equal. And the next thing I want to do is I want to center it so it's in the middle. So let's highlight these again. And I'm going to group these on a temporary basis. So I'm pressing Control G, back to shape format, align. And let's put these in the center. And then I can ungroup. So they're the buttons uh, for my game. So this is what the user will click on to guess the phrase. Now the next thing you need to do is name these shapes and this will just make it easier later on. So to name a shape, we click on it and then under shape format, we've got selection pane. And as you can see, it's selected rectangle four. So all I do now to name it is double click in here and then delete that off. And I'm gonna call this A and you will repeat this for each of the remaining letters across the top. So that's all these letters named. We're now gonna create the letters across the bottom. So duplicate, move into position, and then pop in our letter, and you would repeat this for the remaining letters. Now with those letters done, we can now create the game board. So to create the game board, I'm gonna make a duplicate of this D, and then move it into position. And I'm going to delete the letter because we don't need that. And we're going to change the color. We then create the remaining tiles. I've lost count. Let me count these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we don't need this one. And uh, let's, let's distribute these evenly. So under shape format, align, and let's dis distribute horizontally. And I'm going to do the group temporarily and then put it in the center. I'm going to duplicate this row. So control D to duplicate and then move it into position. And you can add as many rows as you need. So let's do another one. So I've got three rows. Ungroup all of these because these don't need to be grouped. There we go. So there's our game board. I know it seems like a long process at the moment, but what we're doing is creating a template and this will make it easier to create the different games we're going to create. Just one final step and we're almost done because words can sometimes have the same letter repeated. 
For example, alphabet has two A's in it. So for that reason, we're gonna create duplicates of these letters here. Because this is our template, and we're gonna be reusing it for different types of phrases uh, during this game. To create a duplicate, similar to what we've been doing, I'm gonna control D, and then I'm gonna move it up here. There's a little nice little trick for this one. So I'm gonna move it here into the corner. And if I press control D again, it wanna move up into the corner. So I want 10 of these. So what we've got now, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I'm gonna select these by using the control key to select each shape. And then we're gonna go up here to shape format, align, align left, and then align bottom. And that ensures that they're on top of each other. So the letter A's are now stacked on top of each other. So guess what next? You need to repeat this process for each of the remaining letters. We're nearing to the end of this template, I promise. So the next thing we need to do is add a bit of animation just to make it a bit more dynamic and less static. So what I want to happen when the letters appear, I want them to have some sort of animation. So I'm gonna start off with A, so I'm gonna highlight A. So remember these are all stacked up. And just to prove that, if I move this A away, you can see there's another A below it. So all of these letters are stacked up. So I'm just gonna select this one here, so this group, and I'm gonna go up to animations, and then over here to add animation, and we're gonna choose an entrance one. So I like fade, but you can choose any of these. And then we need to add a trigger. So when someone presses on the button A, we want this A to have animation. So to do that, we highlight this stack again, and then go over to trigger, and then we go to on click of, and then we choose the letter. So this is why we name the buttons, it just makes it easier to identify which button we need. So I'm gonna click on A, so that one's animated. So whenever the user clicks on A, then that one will come through. And guess what? You need to repeat this for each of these letters down here at the bottom. Now that the animation has been added to these letters, you can add some finishing touches to your slides using the iSpring tab. This tool makes it easier for you to convert your PowerPoint presentation into an interactive e-learning course. iSpring integrates with your PowerPoint to provide a toolbar that is full of useful features to make your course more engaging for the learner. It even has an awesome text-to-speech option. For more information, check out the link to iSpring in the description of this video. In this example, I'm just gonna keep things simple and add a background. So go over here to backgrounds. So there's lots of different backgrounds to choose from. You've got different filters here on the left-hand side. For this example, I'm gonna keep it really simple and just go to abstract. I like this blue one here, so let's go for this. And insert. It covers my game, but that's no problem. I just right click here and then center back. Now what I would recommend doing is locking this background because in a moment we're gonna be moving these tiles. So to lock this background, we go to the picture, format tab, selection pane, click the background, and then on this list, it's picture 73. What we do next is click on this padlock and that locks it. So that means we can't move this background around anymore. So this is our template slide. So this is where we're gonna build our games from. So the next step we do is right click here and then duplicate slide. And this slide here will be our game. So we're always gonna duplicate slide one to make our different games for guess the phrase. So the next thing you do is put your phrase in. So on this slide here, you put your phrase in. All you're gonna be doing is dragging these letters from the bottom into this tile area. So I'm gonna grab my first letter, pull it into position. And there's still another L down there because remember, they're all stacked on top of each other. So there's my phrase, like and subscribe. A bit of a shameless plug. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe so this video can reach more people. Now the next thing you might want to do, this is an optional extra. You may want to shade these titles a bit darker so people can see the length of the words in your phrase. So to do this, we just click on the tile go into shape format and then choose a darker gray. So I'm gonna go for this one here. And I want to do the rest of these. Uh, one, one way that you can do this really quickly 
is have this tile selected, then go to the Home tab, double click on the Format Painter, and then just simply click on the other tiles. So let's see what this slide will look like in action. So I'm gonna just play the presentation from this slide. So to do that, I do Shift on my keyboard, Shift and F5, and it will then play from this slide here. So as you can see, we've got the darkened tiles. So we can see the lighter tiles, which will show the length of the words. The tiles at the bottom have disappeared because we don't need them. We only see those tiles when we click on these buttons here. So guess the phrase. So I'm gonna go from, for a letter. I pick my letters, so L is part of the phrase, so that's up there. It shows down here as well to show that it's been selected already. Let's choose a wrong answer. So we don't have W, so that just appears at the bottom. So the idea is you go through the remaining letters to bring in the phrase. So there we have like and subscribe. Let's cancel out of this one. So it did take a lot of work to build the template, but once the template's built, it's really easy to construct this game. To make this game easier to share with others, you can put it online and then share a URL. So to do this, well, before we do this, we're gonna hide this first slide here because this is our template slide, so we don't need it. We're gonna hide this one. And then to put it online, we go to iSpring Suite and then Publish. There's different options down the left-hand side, but what we need for this example is iSpring Space. I'm gonna change the name of the content and then click publish down here at the bottom and then iSpring will process the slides. Once the processing is complete, click manage content and this will take you into this iSpring area where you can easily share your game. So to do this, you just hover your mouse over the game, click here, you've got various different options. We want share and then we toggle this to on and you've got the option here to copy a link you can also add a password down here at the bottom so you can password restrict it. And this coding in the middle is if you want to add it to a website. So this is how the game looks online to others. You do have options across the top here so you can see how it would look in different formats or on different devices. So going back to the bigger one, to play the game, the user would then simply click on these buttons to guess the phrase. If you want to learn how to convert text to speech, in your PowerPoint presentations using iSpring, then watch this video here. If you want to learn more about iSpring, then click on the link and this will take you to their website.